Hi guys, my name is Courtney and this is Classics with Courtney. And today I'm going to be doing a review of The School for Good and Evil, which is the first book in a trilogy by Simon Chanini. This book has been pretty popular on booktube. I've seen it around. Really hard time just like trying to find reviews on this book to just see like people's opinions on this, especially when looking for negative reviews. I was searching for the negative reviews for a reason because after I read this book, I was like, oh my god. Why does everybody love this? There are so many issues with this. It's going to be a little bit of a negative review, but I will try very hard to say the good points about this book because there were a lot of good points. There was a lot of stuff that I really liked. If you've watched my channel before, you will know that I don't do reviews often, but I am trying really hard to make more review videos. And after this book, I was like, oh my god, why does everybody love this? So I was just like, I gotta do a review for this, we gotta talk. Also have a review on Goodreads, which will probably be pretty similar to this video, but if you want, you can go and check out my thoughts, kind of my initial thoughts after directly reading the book. So they're not always very comprehensive, but they definitely give you a feel for what I was feeling at the time. The School for Good and Evil very hyped on booktube, and I don't know why. I honestly, I don't know why. Yes. The concept of this world is so great. There's a school for good, there's a school for evil, these children get snatched up in the middle of the woods and taken to these schools. I am all about magic schools. I'm all about fairy tale princess retelling stuff. I'm into that. And then of course the big plot twist is the character that looks like she's evil goes to the school for good and the character that looks like she's good goes to the school for evil. And the plot just becomes a whirlwind after that. Let me tell you. it gets crazy. But like I said, concept A+. Plus. I'm all about that. world is really cool and really interesting. However, the world building, the actual writing of this world is so crazy and just too much for my eyes. If you want to world build an info dump, that's fine. Just do it right. If you want to keep it mysterious and not tell me the rules, that's fine too. But our good friend Simon Chanmin does not. He does both at the same time. He's trying to keep some things mysterious and doesn't want to tell you things. And then on the other side, he's like info dumping, info dumping so much detail in your face that you can't even comprehend. I had so much setting detail like dumped into my brain for like the schools that I couldn't even imagine them in my mind because I was just like so overwhelmed. The world building in the beginning of the book is just very, very rushed and I was just so confused. It just was not written well. I don't mind being confused, but I don't think it was supposed to be confusing. I think it was supposed to explain everything really well and it just... Ugh. So some of the writing was great. It was fine. There were a lot of issues with the writing. He switches perspectives. So I would say every chapter or every section is kind of one character's perspective. It is in third person, but it is through the eyes of one character. So you know you have an Agatha section and then you have like a Sophie section and then you'll have like some random characters spurted through. That's fine. Then there's scenes where all the characters are there and then it becomes third person omniscient but it'll start off as one character's perspective and then start switching characters. No, 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 no. It has to be omniscient the whole scene, or you have to stick with one character's perspective. You can't go switching around because it gets confusing and it's just not good right. Everybody's picking this book up because of the message. It's supposed to be this kind of really cool message about good and evil and that there's gray areas and that not everything is as it seems and blah, 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 blah. Sure, I agree with that. I liked those parts of the book, but there were issues with just so many issues that could be so problematic. At some points it's this very sarcastic kind of tone where it's like kind of condescending to certain um, stereotypes and certain like viewpoints and it's fine like I caught up on it but I don't think a lot of people will and it just it could be so problematic. I was cringing because I'm like I know what you're trying to say but it doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> Basically the plot of this book is a hot mess. I refer to it in my review as flip-flopping. I don't know, the characters are flip-flopping all over the place, the plot is flip-flopping all over the place, it is just too much. It needed to be pared down, it just, it does not have a central structure, linear, like, line that we're going across. It's just all the stuff all at once. It's just like, you need to tone it down, you need to calm down. The characters, oh my god, Agatha and Sophie. I don't even think you're supposed to like Sophie, but I love her. She's just like, <laughs> this 
kind of witchy girl, and I don't mean witch with a W, although she is a witch. I'm trying not to swear in my videos anymore. I'm trying really hard. Agatha is just this nasty girl, very vain and horrible, but I love her anyway because she's just so great. So Agatha is just this sweet, gloomy girl, but basically you can see her pure and beautiful heart, and I love her so much. And Tedros. Okay. Tedros is kind of the love interest, love triangle thing for this book. I love him when he's with Sophie, I love their banter, but like as a character by himself, I'm just, I'm not sold on him yet. Okay, so this book is like geared towards middle grade, it's supposed to be a middle grade book, but it doesn't feel middle grade at all. Like the way the characters think, like I know it's kind of playing off that trope of like 13 year olds being in fairy tales and stuff, but like what 13 year old has rippling back muscles and crap? Like. I was just like cringing. I'm like, am I supposed to find this 13 year old with like a six pack hot? Because it's very strange. I know a lot of it is like tongue in cheek humor about fairy tales and stereotypes about our society, but at the same time, I was just like, I hack to characters though. The characters are flip flop. It's not character development. One point where Agatha just had like this great development moment and I'm like, yes, girl, get it? You're doing right? I love it when she's becoming evil. I love it when she's doing all these potions and she's like, I'm gonna be the baddest girl in town but like just keep changing their mind about what they're gonna do and it's not explained and it's not character development it's just flip-flopping the concept world the two main characters I love but I just had so many issues with the writing and so many issues with just the plot being all over the place I am going to continue reading this series and finish it and I will give you my thoughts for that but so far I am not sold on these books and I don't understand why they're so popular a good concept does not make up for bad plot and writing and structure. It doesn't. It just doesn't. So let's get into a couple of my spoilery thoughts. The problematic things is like it touches very very lightly on specific gender things and at some points I think Agatha might be transgender I want to say. But she doesn't conform to regular gender stereotypes. A point in the book where she's climbing this tower and they're like oh look it you can see this boy climbing the tower. This boy's in a dress. Oh wait it's Agatha. And oh, I'm just like, I just want more. Like, I would love for her to be transgender. I would love that. It's just, there's a lot of problematic things that I just want them to explain because they are big issues in a lot of society right now and they just didn't, he just didn't do it. He didn't do it for me. There is also this crazy love triangle. And like I said, I love when Tedros is with Agatha. I find their banter and how they act around each other so funny and lovely. I'd love for them to be the love interest, but they're not. And that's my other kind of issue. Agatha and Sophie was my other big ship. I was really torn between Agatha and Tedros and Agatha and Sophie. And I love Agatha and Sophie. Throughout the beginning of the book, Agatha's blushing a lot. You know, there's all these kind of things that would be like they're in love. And I'm not even sure this is queer baiting because I got my queer. Like at the end of the book, Agatha kisses Sophie and they say, and I'm pretty sure Sophie says I love you and like they save each other and all that. But then he's like, and they were friends, they were good friends, and blah blah blah, friends. I feel like I'm getting the friend zone because obviously they're in love with each other. Just, just let them be in love, they're not friends, it doesn't feel like they're friends. <laughs> I don't even know how to talk about all the problematic issues I had in this book, even if I do them non-spoilery, like, it's just like, it was a lot. I have very mixed feelings about the school for good and evil, and I have very mixed feelings about the people that I trust that reviewed it positively because... There were so many issues, and while it was good, it was not a great book, and I don't know why you're considering it a five-star read, because it's not. Okay guys, those are my thoughts on The School for Good and Evil. I hope you liked this review video, and I hope I can find somebody that can agree with my thoughts and discuss it with me, because I have a lot of things to talk about, and I didn't even touch on some of the problems I had with this book because I don't even know how to talk about them. And I really just want to put this review out there because I think we need some more talk about this book because it seems like everybody's just talking about the positives and we need, we need some serious discussion about this book, guys. Some serious discussion. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.